Hey everyone, welcome back to Financial Futures. I'm your host, and today we've got some breaking news about potential stimulus checks that could be sent out immediately. Yes, this includes low-income individuals, Social Security retirees, SSDI recipients, survivors, SSI, VA, and RRB beneficiaries. I've got all the details right here, so let's dive right in. I know many of you have been asking in the comments, what would it take for them to send out another stimulus check immediately, like they did over the last few years? That's a great question, and today, I want to talk through the details and the contingency plans because this could happen again, just as it has many times over the past several decades. Let's get into it. But first, if you're new here or haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. It's totally free, and I'm here for you every day to advocate on your behalf and keep you updated with what's going on, including any changes to your monthly benefits. All right, let's get into the details of what's going on and what it would take to send out stimulus checks immediately. One quick side note before we dive deeper, countries around the globe, like China, are injecting more stimulus into their economies because they're facing downturns. Similarly, here in the United States, what we experienced in early 2020, late 2020, and early 2021 with the stimulus checks was not the first time. In fact, we've seen stimulus checks multiple times over the last few decades, and we will see them again in the future. So, what does it take for Congress to send out stimulus checks immediately? It all comes down to the economy, specifically the job market. If jobs aren't being created and unemployment rises, it means companies aren't hiring, profits are down, and overall economic activity slows. This scenario often leads to the government stepping in with stimulus measures to jumpstart the economy. Remember what happened in early 2020? Things changed rapidly, and within days the CARES Act was passed, including those famous $1,200 checks. When the economy is falling off a cliff, Congress can act surprisingly quickly. They've done it before, and they'll do it again if necessary. Now, let's talk about the Federal Reserve. They've been raising interest rates, which impacts borrowing costs for everyone, especially small and medium-sized businesses. These businesses make up a huge portion of our economy, and when they struggle, the economy struggles. If access to capital dries up, it can lead to layoffs and further economic contraction. So, what's on the table right now? We're seeing cracks in the economy, and if things deteriorate further, stimulus checks could be sent out again. The process is relatively straightforward. Congress appropriates the funds, the Federal Reserve prints the money, and checks are distributed to stimulate spending. The whole point of stimulus checks is to get money into the economy quickly. It's not just about helping individuals, it's about using us as a proxy to stimulate economic activity. When we spend, it drives economic growth. So, when might this happen again? It all depends on the economy. If we see a significant downturn and rising unemployment, that's when we should be on the lookout for stimulus checks. Now let's talk another topic. Have you ever wondered why some people seem to have loads of money while most of us struggle to make ends meet? It's a question that has puzzled many, but today, we're diving deep into the secrets of the wealthy. I'm going to share with you five crucial money lessons that, if you implement, will transform your financial life dramatically. These are the same principles that separate the massively wealthy from those who are barely scraping by. Let's get into it. All right, let's kick things off with lesson number one, accumulate assets and reduce liabilities. This may sound obvious, but it's amazing how many people don't understand the difference between assets and liabilities. Your house, car, or designer clothes. These are not assets. They're liabilities because they take money out of your pocket. An asset, on the other hand, is something that puts money into your pocket. Think of it this way. If you bought a car and rented it out for more than your monthly payment, that car becomes an asset. Big companies renting out fleets of cars are making bank because they've turned liabilities into assets. 
So, start focusing on accumulating things that pay you, not drain you. Lesson number two is knowing the difference between good debt and bad debt. Our education system doesn't teach this, but it's crucial. Bad debt, like credit card debt or personal loans, doesn't bring money back to you. It's a financial black hole. Good debt, however, can be beneficial. Imagine buying a $30,000 car primarily for business use. If you rent it out and it brings in more income than the monthly expenses, you've turned a potential liability into an asset. This concept applies to real estate too. If your rental property earns you more than the mortgage and maintenance costs, it's good debt. The key is to use debt to acquire assets that pay you back. Now, here's a controversial one. Stop saving money. I know, it's drilled into us to save, save, save. But money sitting in a savings account is losing value due to inflation. Instead of hoarding cash, use it as a tool to invest in assets that grow and generate income. Of course, have an emergency fund, but beyond that, let your money work for you. Saving money in today's economy is like saving computer paper from your junk mail it's pretty much useless. The goal is to keep your money moving and working for you. Lesson 4 is all about education. You need to be constantly learning and growing. Whether it's reading books, listening to audiobooks, or taking courses, make it a habit to learn something new every day. The more you know, the more connections you make, and the better decisions you can take to grow your wealth. Personally, I've read over 31 books so far this year, and I'm constantly absorbing new information from smarter, wealthier individuals. Never stop educating yourself it's one of the best investments you can make. Finally, lesson five, write down your goals. But don't just jot them down, make them clear, concise, and actionable. Your goals need to be so simple that even a child could understand them. Think of your goals as destinations. Just like a plane has a flight plan or a ship has a course, you need to know where you're going and how you're going to get there. Set your goals, break them down into actionable steps, and track your progress. This approach transforms abstract dreams into achievable milestones. So, there you have it, five powerful money lessons that can change your financial future. Remember, the difference between the wealthy and everyone else is not just knowledge but implementation. Start applying these lessons today, and you'll be on your way to financial success. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Financial Futures and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on our latest tips and strategies. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep building your financial future.